guys, today we're going to look at funny French words that may not even exist in your language. That's right. In case you don't know me, Rochelle DeMeo, your native French instructor from Baltier Academy. Towards the end of the video, I'm actually going to answer a question that one of you YouTubers asked me. Bonjour, Erika. <laughs> Erika, this is for you. A question that you asked me, I'm going to answer it towards the end of the video. So let's dive in. Numéro un, des paysans. Des paysans. So if you've gone to a different country and maybe you kind of get homesick, that's kind of our equivalent. But if you look at it, de is kind of saying like the opposite. Pays means country. So it's like the opposite of your country. Hmm. That's a way of kind of looking at it, right? What's ironic too is that it can be used in a positive way, almost as in like a memory that it evokes. So here's a scenario that happens with my kids and the kind of conversation we have is when I ask them what they want for breakfast and I might say, uh, vous voulez des tartines? You're like, tartine, what is that? Because that doesn't even exist in English. It simply means a piece of bread that's sliced and that you put something over it, whether it's butter or jam or Nutella or something else. And literally tartine means all of that. So we talked in the last video about flâner, but you can also use it for a person, flâneur, flâneuse, which is really a person that wanders around the streets, kind of window shopping, kind of walking around. And that again is not a term that we would even have in English. Raplapla. What? Raplapla is literally when you're just like done, you're out of it, you're tired, just like bleh. And it's literally what that means. Again, another word that we don't really find in the English dictionary. Pantouflard, pantouflard, hmm. Well, you might know the word pantoufle, slippers, but pantouflard, referring to a person, yes. A person always wearing slippers, yes. So how do you say that in English? If you know the equivalent, tell me in the comments below because I have never, in the many years I've now lived in the United States, I still cannot find the equivalent of that word of a person that spends their day in slippers. Well, especially now, a lot of people that are still en télétravail, that are working from home. And if you haven't checked out the video teaching you useful COVID and pandemic related terms, this is the video you'll want to watch to learn more about it. The next word that we have up is le bricolage. Le bricolage. And we even have stores that have that word bricolage, comme monsieur bricolage, in it. And it simply means pretty much a handyman, but bricoleur is technically handyman. So it's the action of being handy, stuff like that, whatever that can mean. So it's a mix of do-it-yourself projects, um, simple repairs, home improvement, but it's really a noun, le bricolage, that we use that kind of just signifies doing that. And you might have heard a person say, tu es déjanté, and think, mm. what does that mean? Well, jante is that rim around a car, so you're saying, wait, you are like a rim? Like you're rimmed off? No. You pretty much use that if a person keeps saying nonsense, and then you just say, tu es déjanté. Next word up is, ah, c'est écœurant. Écœurant? Well, you look at the word and you're like, there's the word cœur, heart in there, but écœurant actually, actually means gross or disgusting. Ew. So try to figure that one out if you don't really know that word. It's kind of a hard one to figure out, but we use it all the time. Écœurant. La quincaillerie. La quincaillerie is the next word, which really is a store you can find, knickknacks and kind of just everything. But it's so odd because it's different than what you may have in English-speaking countries or where you are from. You literally find everything from kitchen utensils to toys to bricolage stuff, you know. Um, you find a lot of junk, I don't know. And finally, the one that I often use in audible pauses that I use at the end of my videos is voila. And students, when I was teaching at a few colleges, they'd also always ask me why I would say voila. And I could never explain exactly what it meant because you can use it to introduce a person like a guest speaker coming in the classroom or you can use it to kind of conclude something like voila that's the end of what I'm saying or the end of a section or a lesson but um it can be used in many ways if you'd like for me to do an entire video on voila well I will do that just put in the comments and I will make that video that explains in detail how you use voila to really sound French like a native now I promised you that I would answer the question that Erica had, which was simply, is translating accurately important? And the answer may surprise you. Before I share this very useful last tip, I want you to go ahead, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. 
Merci. subscribe now. So, yes and no. That would be my answer to that question, Erica, is on one hand, you don't want to be such a perfectionist that you translate and you don't want to be able to not translate or not communicate in French because you're a perfectionist. That's so right. if you're just trying to get by or understand the gist of a sentence or, a com or some kind of conversation, then the accuracy of the translation is not important. But if you're using it in a professional field or you own a company and want to have it written in French, don't use the internet online translator that may be false. Like this one, hmm, not good at all. Well, if you look at it, yes, turkey, the animal, you do say dand, but the country, no, that's not how you say it. You actually say la turkey. And oh. if this company had gotten an accurate translation by an interpreter or translator, they would have gone this right. Same with this next image, which really doesn't mean anything at all. And again, just translate it literally. So oh. the answer would be translating accurately is not important if you're just trying to get the gist of something, if you're just trying to kind of basically understand and figure out what is, is your, the person is trying to convey. But it is important in a professional setting with a job um, or in a company where you would need to be understood, right? What question may you have that I can answer? A bientôt tout le monde.